All right. Well, it is about five minutes after um, 1500 UTC, so I think we can get started. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to the first EIPIP movie. Uh, movie. Movie. Yeah, mm. we're, we're making a movie. Uh, <laughs> no, this is the first EIPIP meeting, uh, not a movie. And um, today we're going to be discussing the first order of business, EIPIP. Does it mean EIP Improvement Processes Meeting or EIP Improvement Proposals Meeting? Processes sound much better. <laughs> yeah, I think processes would be better. Yeah. And that's what I've mostly been saying. I've gone back and forth, though. So we have that. Um, with that out of the way, I think for today's meeting, it's not going to be super long, but we do want to go over some of what we discussed in the Telegram group, maybe give some intros for everybody, um, figure out some solid next steps, what the cadence of the meeting should be, um, what tools we'll be using, because um, I had a few in mind, mostly Google Docs related tools for coming up with um, group discussion and group edits on certain documents. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pull up the um, EIP improvement proposal, EIP uh, improvement processes meeting um, doc uh telegram and look through that a little bit while we go through intros and so then we can talk about some of what was been discussed in there so we'll start with annette uh, hi everyone uh i'm annette uh and i'm there from magician's side just to see where magicians can help out in aip ip process <laughs> and um just to see what we can help out with basically in this uh improvement proposals of AIPs. Thank you. Thanks, Annette. Next we'll talk to Brent. Yeah, this is Brent Alsop. I'm with Canonizer, the consensus building and tracking system. Okay, thank you. Next we have Bruno. Yep. I'm with the uh, Web3 Foundation. I'm here to learn from you guys and maybe contribute something useful in return, um, but mainly as an outside observer and commenter. OK, great. Charles? Hey, everyone. Um, Charles with MakerDAO and uh, part of the Ethereum Catheters. I'm here to add some ideas to the process that we've tried out in the, few, in, in the past, sorry, and uh, see where this can go. Okay, um, next we have James. James Hancock. I uh, do a lot of work with the all core devs, uh, particularly hard for coordination and stuff like that. So I'm excited to get this improving. Okay, Luis. Or Lewis, sorry, I might be saying that wrong. I, I, I blanked. Lewis Guthman, are you on here? You're muted if you are. Okay, we'll come back to them. Uh, Pooja? Hi, I'm Pooja from Ethereum Cat Herders, and I'm here to help out with the improvement process, EAP improvement process. All right, uh, Wei? Uh, hi, I'm Wei from Party. Uh, pretty excited to be here. Great. Um, William and Triken. Hi, I'm Will. I've been writing some EIPs, also involved in Solidity and the Magicians. Thank you. Uh, William Schwab. Hi, I'm also William. Um, and I'm here with the cat herders and I'm also here basically to see what I might be able to offer the, the EIP process. Excellent. I think that's everybody. Um, as people come in, we can also just, um, get them, um, intro but for now, let's move on to the next step, which is kind of slowly or not slowly necessarily, but carefully defining the, what scope we want to actually tackle using these meetings and using these 
like uh, GitHub issues we're going to be opening. And just to be clear, this isn't a dic dictatorship of meetings to change everything. It's basically a way for discussion to happen more quickly and then for that discussion to be transferred onto something like GitHub issues or Ethereum magicians forums or something like that. Uh, so the broader community can uh, participate if they're not able to participate through these calls, like if the time doesn't line up or they don't have Telegram or things like that. We want this to be very open and accessible uh, to everyone who wants to be involved. Um, so I think there's a lot of issues that we have with um, the EIPs. So let's go ahead and start voicing some of those and then from that uh, we'll just go around and start saying, you know, kind of things we think can be improved, some things we don't like, and then from there we can identify the most urgent places to address. Um, so examples of this could be, I'm confused what EIP-1 has to do with anything, or like the process is an EIP-1. Um, I think it's too hard to get an ERC or an EIP, like a, another type of EIP approved. Um, there's not enough editors, things like that. So, um, who wants to go first? I have one. All right, go um, right ahead. I'd like to see uh, a project scope for EIPs in general. Like, why are we doing this? What is the goal of the EIP? Not the proposals, but the project. So, now, can you define project scope a little bit better for, for people who haven't really ever done a project, project yep. scope? So, we would like to know... The, the, the purpose of a project scope is so that you can quickly close issues that are out of scope. Uh, people want to, there's a lot of people that want to contribute. So rather than having sad discussions on someone thinks that they want to make a change and someone else thinks this is not part of the project, um, you have a scope that which you, you pointed to and you say, the reason why we can't do this is because it's out of the scope. For example, and the way this affects us practically is um, there's a lot of discussions on EIP one, uh, we're having this meeting and We'd like to know why are we doing ERCs at all? What in EIPs at all? How does it fit into changes in general? And so, for example, when the scope is not clear for this project, you will see the EIPs such as one where we should not have any state changes. That like pro, it was like the protest EIP. So, do we want to have that in our discussion here? Is that out of scope? Um, that, that helps define. You know, are we doing this to track? The ideas that are out there, or are we just, is this a not, is just purely technical? You know, we've, I think, and I think this has changed. So in the past, EIPs were about what changes are good ideas. Now EIPs are more like, let's just document specifications. I think that's more where we are today. I think there's an understanding on that, but I don't think it's written down. So I'd like it to be written down in a clear way that everybody agrees on. Hmm. Another one that, that kind of made me think. Earlier on in the EIP process in the beginning, there was this need and this acceptance of the vagueness around the EIP process to make it flexible and to make it so that there wasn't like this really harsh handed, this is how things are going to be-ness about it. And we do want to keep some of that spirit with the fact that there can be multiple, like people can make multiple token standards and even though one of them's in final, if someone else is in draft, you can definitely use that standard and stuff like that. So making sure to avoid words and statements and things within the written procedures and written scope of work for any IP that would dictate it to be the like ultimate sounding, um, like the ultimate, what's, what am I looking for? Um, like end all be all for all of the different uh, EIPs that could be submitted is probably not what we should be going for, in my opinion, but is something that I think people expect out of the process. So I agree that writing down um, a project scope would be a good idea. Uh, who's next? Who wants to say something else? Yeah, uh, I, I can say a little bit about it. When we started, excuse me. When we started this uh, discussion initially about the improvement process, so uh, we have kind of uh, uh, discussed uh, and uh, drafted something here in the Telegram group about the uh, layout, how we should be going ahead. In the sense, like when we are talking about improvement process, we need to consider about the 
issues that we are facing at the time, the problems that we need to identify first in order to actually be able to solve it with the uh, the, the improvement process. So um, if we can go through this uh, document, uh, 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 we have we are trying to define the problem, the existing problems. And one of the most important thing that we need to do is about the onboarding of the editors. Uh, so uh, I think that is going to be an important aspect for this group to be taken care of. Excellent, I love that document. We should look at that and, and see what we can do about um, uh, contributing to that. And before we go further, uh, Bob, we did intros with everyone, so we'll do a quick intro with you as well. You can just say who you are and um, why you're excited to be here, or wh what you do, or whatever. Uh, hey guys, so yeah, uh, my name's Bob Samuel. Um, I was previously at the Foundation EEA Consensus, been involved with the Ethereum community for uh, four and a half years now. Um, I'm now the Executive Director at uh, the Ethereum Classic uh, Cooperative as well. Uh, so yeah, very interested in uh, EIP process specking standards. Uh, you know how that how that you know how that fits together with all participants like enterprise, like you know how EEA and EIPs fit together, how EIPs and uh, ECIPs fit together. Uh, you know this whole process um, is of a lot of interest to me. Okay, thank you. And what we're doing right now, Bob, is just going around and if you and coming up with uh, things like the ones listed on the sheet that Pooja um, put in chat, um, problems that they think are with the EIPs from like a meta perspective, an overview perspective, specific issues, there's not enough editors, EIP one's confusing, stuff like that. And we're just voicing those because there is someone note taking. Um, and we can go back, we can kind of shuffle through those between now and the next meeting and organize them in a document using uh, Telegram as a kind of a way to um, organize uh, participation. And then the next meeting have like a clear list of priorities or at least something we can finalize as a list of priorities for this subgroup. So um, who else has anything they want to discuss about, like, if you could have something as a cool end goal of this, of this whole initiative, what would it be, or what's the problem? Up that, do you want me to put up the, um, the documents, like screen share it? Yeah, if you could screen share it, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, here's a practical goal. We uh, we could endeavor to clear the backlog of PRs and issues. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah, and uh, just to further that, um, under the existing EIPs, the one that says stale, I'm having a or defined archived kind of timeline for which EIPs would then be archived and out of the whole mess, which would have to be cleaned up incrementally, um, would be cool like six month to nine month time where uh, the uh, EIP has been left or there's no progress that it gets archived. I agree. It's, it's a lot easier to bulldoze through uh, when you have a bulldozer. <laughs> yeah. Other people? It works. Uh, what is oh, James, you're cutting out or you're muted. It was kind of crackly. Hopefully. Oh, hey, James, that whole thing cut out. I think your your connection's skippy. Yep, I will get back to you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, next, anybody? I have just a comment. Uh, it was mentioned about defining scope or making rules or anything like that. Just my belief is that Consensus can override everything, every, including blockchain state and every, everything. If you can demonstrate and prove that everyone agrees that we should do something, it should be done. And so anyway, just a comment. So I think that's an important point to bring up is that how much how much is this group going to define what it means for something to be under consensus or approved? And what generally has been the rule of thumb is that 
we leave it up to the quote community and then the EIP editors being more of the judges of when something comes to consensus more or less uh, is practically how it how, how it's happening right now. And I'm not finding huge problems in that, except for the fact that there's too many EIPs for the EIP editors to go through and um, the EIP editors to go through and approve or decline or things like that. And there's also no expiration dates on EIPs. That might be something we want. And so I don't know how much we should focus as a priority on what is defined as consensus, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't put the tools out there to make sure that people know about them and can utilize them and maybe give suggest new suggestions in the template to say, hey, here's some things that are available for you, like reach out to Twitter, to Reddit, use um, different tools to like assess your your um, community consensus of who's using the tools and things like that. About how many active EIPs are there at the moment compared to the number of editors? Because that cognitive load is obviously like a, must be a, a, a real big problem now. Um, yes, I don't have the numbers. Um, and when you say active, define active. Well, <laughs> listed and not resolved. Listed, not resolved. Yeah. So because of the fact that like, that no one really does the decline option very much. We just kind of lose track or lose sight of where an EIP has been, and there's no archive mode that we would probably want to create. Um, I mean, there's in the hundreds, if not a thousand or more. Um, if someone has the page pulled up, they can answer because I, I have my full screen recording on, so I can't pull it up. I looked at this. Yeah, we have we have hundreds of yeah. quote draft and then uh, de facto draft, like they pretty specified in an issue, but just not committed as a file, as a draft. So I would say hundreds in the past three months, we're looking at dozens. So the active in the past three months, I mean, we've got ones from years ago, but are still getting comments, right. but actually specifying right. in the past few months, we're just dozens. Because I know on, on, on the ECIPs where there's a, you know, same, same kind of process, but a lot smaller number of them, you know, even there, we've got a bunch of sort of stale stuff that, you know, there's too much stuff. And, and especially in some cases, you know, that's the, this, the stuff is never going to go through, right? It's, it's, it's not sufficient quality or it's just a stupid idea. Um, but you've got this sort of balance between not wanting to like throw away people's work but also knowing, you know, that it's not helpful to have it there. I mean, I guess it's a little bit like the problem that you have in general on open source projects of sort of like rejecting pull requests, right? So just thinking, you know, like not wanting to drive valuable contributors away, but also you haven't, you know, you have to manage the load and sometimes you have to say no, but how do you say no, you know, in a, in a consensus process of an open network? I have uh, two comments on that. Um, we are uh, we are starting as a community project and we're working into an enterprise size project. So to benchmark against some other projects, I just wanna put these two notes out there. If you're interested, you can read up on it. Um, one of them is VS Code, which is the most popular project on GitHub. If anybody's ever opened an issue on VS Code, um, you know that if your issue is not top quality, it will be closed automatically and with and you won't be sad about it because it will tell you why it's closed and there's a policy and that's done. Um, the, the solution when you have too much is to have good policies. Uh, so feelings don't get hurt. That, the worst thing is to, when you turn people off is feelings get hurt because they think something's in scope and it's not. So I think that we've got this on the map here, Hudson put it on the table um, and we have, I think that's gonna be solved. A second one, and maybe this is an issue for our brainstorming here is the Swift Evolution Project. Um, this is where the idea for last call came from. Um, Swift Evolution is made by Apple in a very innovative language. Um, they have specifications and proposals to change it. They have a, I think it's a very good process. It, and it gets a lot of active review. So whenever there's a new idea, there's a lot of review. That's why we have RSS feeds for our, all of our EIPs that are in last call. Um, I always look to them for the ideas on how do you solve these problems when you've got a lot coming in and you don't want to hurt people's feelings. That's some good comments. Um, I would also say that I think we need to 
probably reach out to Bitcoin, Zcash, and Ethereum Classic to see how their policies and their structures are different than ours. Um, since the EIPs initially came from the Bitcoin improvement proposals, which initially came from the Python um, environment proposals, or it's PEPs, I forgot what it stood for, but it's kind of a, has a history of itself, and each group, I think, iterates differently on doing it with different ideas. So getting an understanding of what they're doing differently, I think, would be very helpful. Cool. Yeah, I, Did you I repeat this again? You said uh, Bitcoin improvement. Uh, yeah, Classic Bitcoin improvement and... proposals, Ethereum Classic, and Zcash. Zcash has Zips, Zcash. Uh, yeah. Zcash improvement proposals, and I know that they do really well organizing theirs. Thank you. Uh, Brent, you had something? Yeah, just another comment. Again, trying to make red tape and rules and what's in scope and what's out of scope. What really needs to happen is everything needs to be prioritized. What's top? What are the top 10 things on the list? And we work on those. And so if you can find the entire community, for example, we could create a topic where you rank all of the EIPs and everyone can say, this is my top most important EIP, top 10 and so on. And then you can find out the entire community. These are the top 10. And then if someone has an issue that's real old, it's been hanging around, that and, and a new technology that makes that possible, then then they can start recruiting and it can rise up in po popularity and lower down in popularity. But it's all about prioritizing thing. And and so all large communities fail miserably at that kind of stuff. And the best they get is making rules to try and in scope and out scope and have a whole bunch of sensors trying to make people mad by saying we're shutting your project down. But if, if you find out what everyone wants and do concise and quantitatively get if you can know what everyone wants that by definition is a consensus and if everyone can prioritize things and if you can measure consensus by what is the ether think people voting their ether what are the uh, peer ranked um, core developers uh, what do they all think what do the miners think and if you can canonize things in different ways that allows you to prioritize all your work and um, and, and problems like that become much easier to solve um, so what you're saying like, is you, you want to encourage you want to make it easier for these good ideas to find the encouragement they deserve. Yeah, and, and, and you measure how good the ideas are by how many people are supporting them. And, and also you have to have a way for people that don't want particular things to happen to also have a competing camp. And, and you find out what both camps want and then you have negotiation to find out where the agreement is. You focus on the agreement and you push the disagreement to lower level supporting sub camps. And, um, and, and it's all about finding out and getting everyone everything you want and not censoring or anyone any, at any time. So if I may, I think this is, I mean, I'm going to be a bit harsh on this one. Uh, I think it's what you're thinking to, to believe that people are getting, going to get more involved than they are today. Um, what happens in sort of community that there is like ideologies, like people just, like, just actually want to get pushed to push things forward. And those are the ones who, who actually do things. Otherwise, just I don't expect the community to rise now and say, oh, I'm against this or, or I'm in favor of this. And uh, I think the, the, the problem right now we have with EIP is not that we, 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 don't, um, uh, we, we, we don't have support or like we don't have people coming and saying, oh, I'm interested, is that we don't have people that are sufficiently interested to actually do, it, do the work or do the due diligence or uh, come forward and say, and prove to the sort of to the rest of uh, of the core dev at this point uh, that they they actually did the the, the work of uh, of uh, sorting things out. I, I would really I would really agree with that. Um, Luis, if you could just introduce yourself so people could know. Yeah, we did uh, that sure. earlier. Yeah, sure, sure. So Louis, I'm from Starkware. Uh, we so we got involved with the IP process for uh, in the case of the IP 2028, uh, which was the, the reduction of transaction uh, costs. Um, kind of transaction cost, um, uh, a transaction, um, basically sending cold data reduction cost uh, on in Istanbul. And and uh, from my experience, because I came in pretty late into the, the only IP and I somewhat doesn't come from the Ethereum Foundation or any sort of big organization that's already be part of the community for a while, uh, there was two things that I find very challenging at first uh, to when, when I was trying to get involved. Um, first of all, when you get into the, the gitter, there is like many, many code that are very hard to understand from the outside. And you need to basically 
I still like a month and a half as a stalker trying to understand how you can intervene or well, well, how you don't sound like an idiot, how you basically prove your point and prove value to the rest of the of the core dev. Um, and uh, and also the thing that I saw from from my perspective and from what I saw in the Istanbul process, um, is, there is there was some like EIP that went through, although the one who were pushing it were even not like not even involved anymore. Uh, it's like there was some sort of inertia because oh at some point we say yes and then now we just rationalize that we need to continue and no one keep pu keep pushing. So that thing that gets me kind of upset uh, from the perspective of uh, the future um, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the network, because we end up with like proposals that get accepted and end up being barely used for many, many reasons, or, um, or just uh, were implemented uh, in, in, in where, or where the specification were just not appropriate because there is only one people, one group of people who worked on it. Uh, Louis, to summarize uh, the uh, the issue that you faced, uh, uh, I'm assuming that maybe people who are not coming directly from the Ethereum uh, Foundation or maybe development work on on a regular basis, the the challenges that they are facing at the initial level is how to proceed from you know proposing the proposal uh, the EIP from draft to accepted and how we can steer along like uh, uh, taking uh, help from the core dev or the reviewer is it what you are trying to communicate no. so what i'm trying to say is that my belief is that the core dev should be the safekeeper they would be they should not outside the political and like for instance the price of the mine like the cost of mining i'm not going to talk about those those are political and depends but everything that is purely technical what the, the change should be what I, I my core belief at the end what the sort of understood understandment i got from the core dev is that they are the safekeeper there are the one who basically say this is sound, this is not sound, and here are the technical reasons why they're not. And uh, what I was trying to say is um, that the, the, there, 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 we like today some sort of uh, what do I need to, from like the process perspective, to show that I'm serious when I'm working on the EIP. And I have an example that I of an EIP, and I may not want to make it public right now because where there when there is a group of people who've worked themselves and no one else can review the, what's going on. And uh, we end up keeping pushing it, although it's not, probably not good enough at this stage. Am yeah. I clear? If I'm I, sure I was clear. Yeah, and, and my, my experience has been along that as well, is the like reducing frictions for the individuals that already want to participate will solve a lot of these like what should bubble up to the top or not like we i don't i pretty strongly feel that we don't need to put what is or isn't considered uh, from substantiation state or from uh, ideological state or whatever because there isn't really many people willing to get in there in the first place and though and making the individuals who want to participate have less friction to be to participate and then give them clear clear guidance on what to do when you want to my i will kind of tease out a lot of these things on its own yeah and another good example of uh someone that struggled with the process who was actively trying to contribute was i think his github handle was made of tin and he was proposing security considerations to be added to I believe it was EIP one, um, but there was no defined process there to make any process type of changes to the EIP process. So it ended up getting dragged on for I think like nine months and I'm not sure if it's been uh, included yet or formally, um, but yeah, he's he voiced his opinion during DevCon at the EIP governance session. And uh, Nick Johnson just agreed that there needs to be more defined process for EIP one process changes, et cetera. Yeah, I think security considerations were added to EIP-1 in the last four months. All right, okay. Um, something which um, is, is a little unclear to me as well in general is what kind of process you have for revising uh, an EIP. Um, you know, the, the I, I saw recently that there was a proposal to do with a mechanism for 
uh, richer sort of um, metadata about a sort of uh, the EIP updates and another update. And it's a discussion that we had on ETC as well is if you update EIP one, should that should there be a should there be an EIP for the update? Because really, if you look at what EIPs are, it's kind of like they're deltas. They're kind of like change lists, right? In that they're all piling up on top of each other. Um, but if you revise an existing one, and I guess it's only really process ones that that, that would be really sensible for. I don't I don't know if there've been updates to to others. Like I guess you could do it for an ERC, like ERC twenty. Um, but but just this general question of like, well, what's the model? You know, what are EIC EIPs and what are specs? Because if your specs are just this bunch of diffs, that itself makes it very hard to understand like what the overall protocol is. Um, you know, so if if you make changes to EIP one, should that itself be another EIP? And also just the thought of, well, could we actually use a canonical document that's like all of the diffs together, if you see what I mean? Because, you know, yellow paper kind of is that for at least part of the spec, but the broader spec, you know, there isn't like, a, here's the Ethereum book. You know, there isn't like a, a, a canonical thing that we're building up. You know, the EIPs are, are just like the change lists, really. So how does that work? So for how it currently works for EIP-1 is EIP-1 is consistently an active status. And because it's an active status, it is able to be updated. And then, an, and then any significant changes are documented through the, you know, the pull request, or you can look through the pull request history of EIP-1, the changes to the file, or you can look at the bottom of EIP-1 and there's a list of significant changes in the date they were performed on. Um, and that was that has been how it's been since 2017, roughly, and there hasn't been a major problem with that. Um, as far as the the problem of updating, like ERC20, if there's a major security concern, the general answer has been make a whole new EIP, um, and just you can call it ERC20 version two if you want, but it will have a different EIP number, and yeah basically just make a whole new eip if you want a change in there that's not something that's like spelling grammar or a gross um overlooked like part of it like you misspelled the word ethereum you kind of like that i agree the that uh this the, the discussion on this should be part of this project how to you know how to update eips i've actually updated a whole bunch of eips for various reasons um but like hudson said normative normative changes require a new EIP, non-normative changes. Uh, I've been filling around this and apparently they're getting merged. Um, also EIP one is not an EIP at all. Um, the fact that we call it EIP one and call it active is just a particularity of this project. Other projects like Swift Evolution don't, they wouldn't call it uh, an EIP, you know, they wouldn't call it a, a standard. It's not a standard, it's a, it's a governance document. In yeah. The, I think in the case of Bitcoin, they update and change a bit when they updated the, the process. So do you mean that they did that just for BIP1 or? Well, they made, for BIP, they for made BIP1, BIP2, they changed, didn't yeah. they? They actually made a BIP2. The first one was by, uh, I mean, uh, Amir Taki, and then um, then Luke Jr. made a, made a, a replacement. That sounds like Luke. Um, OK, yeah. So, um, okay, we'll have to think about that one more. Well, we won't solve it today anyway, but basically we need some, the, the, the summary would be we need more understanding of how to update an EIP in general, re regardless of if it's EIP1 in this case or if it's an EIP that needs small changes or big changes. Mm -hmm. Uh, making that on putting that on paper, I guess, is the best um, way to describe the problem we need, we have. I mean, something and, something I've thought about a lot uh, when we were starting the EA was, you know, well, what 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 does good look like for specific? Um, you know, so uh, really, like the thought that you you've got <clears throat> you've got something in the form of the yellow paper that's covering 
really the EVM, but you haven't really got great canonical specs around everything else. And my thought really was that the EIPs are like kind of like deltas. You know, they are they are like change lists. And really like looking at something like Java, you know, so in Java, you've got the Java programming language book, right? And, and as new changes are made, you know, that, that book is updated. So, so kind of like thinking that really EI, EIPs are a process for change management, but they're not necessarily the best final form of documentation. Yeah, so there needs to be a delineation. I, what I, from what I'm hearing from you, Bob, is there needs to be a delineation between if an EIP is a specification versus if an EIP is a guide, like, I guess, what's the other, what would be the other word? A guideline, maybe, or, hmm. It was abstract, your point? maybe. Abstract, yeah, like, a, like more of an idea or something that people can implement. Um, and I don't know if we want to define that or not. That might be something we think about and just have in our list of things that would be priorities or not. Um, so yeah, anybody have the last last couple of things that? And look, again, uh, Pooja posted a link to a Google Doc, and that Google Doc has a list of stuff already. So we can address that, or if you want to add more detail to any of those points as well. I. Listening to the whole conversation over here, one thing that I, I find myself sort of asking myself is maybe perhaps in terms of defining the scope of what we're trying to do here, are we looking at it at maybe to clarify an existing process or maybe to define process? Or is this maybe a question that even needs to address the possibility of creating a specific platform? As in, it sounds like there's a number of things along the way, so to speak, of an EIP process whether it's the amount of stale EIPs or that EIPs can even go stale, whether it's the difficulty in understanding exactly how to get the support, whether it's the low levels of participation. I mean, if we're going to try and lower friction along all of these different sort of points of pressure, are we looking at the possibility of creating an entirely new platform for the IP process in general, or are we just looking to augment the, the currently extant process? Um, can I react on this? Uh, I have sure. a question. In, in the whole group of people we're talking right now, how many people actually pushed an EIP through the process or tried to push one? Um, I, I'm asking I'm asking the not as like being snarky. I just want to know uh, because I feel like well, I, I have a very different ex 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 um, I think there's three of us. No, okay. there's I, I'm counting well, at least oh, six yeah, people yeah. who've posted, yeah, yeah. posted I got a EIPs. Hand. Okay. Hudson, that's true. Yeah. Okay, not sure. I'm asking just in case. Uh, the, what, from my perspective, the the, the 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 IP process is not broken. It, it, it actually could work. It, it somewhat works. The, the only issue I was facing is there are two things. The first one is it's unclear when you come from the outside how to, who you need to reach to to you know start get get a feeling of you know sort of get validation. Like what if you're what you're proposing is something that makes sense. And you don't because you don't want to sound stupid on the on the core on the core dev chat and 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 that's pretty hard when you're a newcomer to arrive and say you know here is my thing and and what should i do and the second thing is there is a lot of things that in my feeling was just not said out loud like people were thinking things and because of the of the scare of the of the fear to um to 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 be perceived as you know uh, against someone or against a project uh, they just don't speak out, and that is more what I would try to fix uh, by being, by providing clear guidelines than trying to, re to reform a process that somewhat works. Uh, I have a quick note here. Um, yes, I think this phone call is the EIP IP, not the EIP replacement C. Um, and two, I've heard I heard a couple of things here, and I've heard some uh, dissent on should we have. Um, how, how, how much we want to encourage new people. One of the ways to solve this problem, um, which I implemented in the KDE project, which is a Linux a competitor to GNOME, um, we had a mentor program where, yeah, there's a lot of rules. And honestly, I got involved in this in 2018 and none of the things that were specified in EIP1 were my experience. So I had to go find how it actually works. And that's why I'm here to document some of that stuff. But with KDE, um, it is much harder to get involved. And what we did is we just said, here's a few people you can call 
that can help you from idea to what you want to do and all that. And, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer to do that. Um, and I'm, I know other people will as well, but maybe the solution here doesn't have, we don't have to figure out all this stuff out, write it down and agree on it. We can just put a couple of names there of people that have done this stuff and want to help. Yeah, that's a good, simple solution. Uh, so, I, go ahead. I agree, 100%. Um, so, um, William Schwab, uh, did that answer your question about if we're going to kind of redo a lot of the stuff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if, I, if I'm understanding you, Luis, and also you, William, um, it sounds like the process seems to be at least a process that can work there's a certain level of, or a certain lack of communication about what needs to be done, a certain lack of documentation maybe. Does that address your second point though, Luis? Uh, you were saying before that there's also sort of this bizarre process that certain certain EIPs seem to have some level of Brownian motion. They get sent into motion and then even if they completely zombie out, they somehow get included. Would this help with they, that They, they don't get included. It's less than getting included more than uh, they, they keep being referred to, although everyone involved sort of know that there is a big problem with it. Uh, so my second comment was more like there is some, um, the core dev claim to be, and that's something a big mistake in my opinion, claim to be not political. Political not has uh, having ideology, but political as being a place of public space where people describe what they want to do and lobby for it. And, and because it's, they don't recognize this aspect of it, in my, 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 then it's very hard to, to, from the outside, when you don't understand what the dynamics of it, you, you, it's very hard to push uh, efficiently uh, a process. So that's more with the second point. And maybe standardize a way, for instance, okay, for instance, um, <clears throat> when an EIP can be implemented by the client, then the people who should have say about the specs should be the client. Uh, when the EIP should, is not implemented by the by, your cli by the client themselves, it should be like a pre, like sort of a compiler, whatever. There should be multiple implementation that could be uh, referred to by by, by, by the client. Uh, there is things there that are not followed today, and and uh, and it could be standardized and and more like made explicit, which I think would be more of the solution to to the problem we're facing. So you're saying that you think that also could be handled by better documentation and communication? It would be probably handled better by sort of a mentorship program, as, he, as, as uh, I forgot who said it. Um, Will was, said it. Yeah, uh, well, and, uh, and also sort of an agreement on what are the best practice we should have. Okay, for instance, and I'm going to quote uh, what we did, because um, uh, we were, so in, in our case, the REP was, uh, could have been very uh, litigious. It could have been like a lot of conflict about it because it's someone involved like uh, uh, core like ideology about the blog side stuff like that in, in blockchain. Um, and what we did is we we, we sort of circumvent that problem by providing mm, ob like objective data that no one else everyone could check. And when we finished and we released it like yesterday, uh, we published a post. EIP uh, analysis saying what we said was correct, their methodology worked. So like sort of things that we believe, the reason why we pushed it is for mostly for, uh, because we believe that's the right good look that should be in place when we, we try to push uh, different kind of, uh, of, of improvement. So maybe when someone is offering a new EIP, so sort of agree ahead of time, what is, uh, what, what would people feel comfortable with, like what the core they would be, be comfortable with when they, when to, to get included and say it out loud, like having objectives that it will be like easy to understand and, and to, um, and to, um, and to get through for, for, for EAP, uh, EAP, uh, uh, champion, sorry, it's what you're looking for the word. Okay. And I think something to take note of though, is your EIP process you went through was for core EIPs and part of the, um, challenge we're going to have is addressing the fact that a core that there are a uh, there are four types of EIPs there's a core EIP a networking EIP an ERC and a meta EIP I think I got those right but um anyways they are very each one of them have a seem to have a very different process which doesn't mean we should break out the EIP repo into different other repos necessarily but that we should better define and 
like cement some of the processes behind getting those through and the core dev meetings have already started doing that with things like eligible for inclusion EIPs and other rules like that that aren't written we need to write those down this year pretty much um, and then real quick um, Alex Berigzazi AXIC um, if you want to do a quick intro we gave intros earlier so um, just feel free to give a quick intro for yourself oh and you're on mute there you go Hey all, I, I only just joined like five minutes ago because I was in another meeting and I need to leave shortly. Um, I hope there's a recording or something so I can listen. We're doing a recording and notes. Oh, great. Um, but briefly about me, I've been involved with the EIP process for quite a bit. Um, I guess was since probably 2016 and I've been volunteering to review stuff for quite a bit. And as of the past couple of months, uh, I've been doing reviews as an editor. Um, and I submitted a, a lot of different proposals to improve the, the process. And a lot of those are still in, in pending state. OK, well, thanks for joining the Telegram and the call. And uh, I'll be pushing out um, the recording of this uh, on the Telegram and on Twitter and stuff um, after I get it uploaded when I get my new laptop in because I was stupid and spilled an entire drink on my other laptop, so it's dead. I'm using an old backup computer right now. <laughs> um, anyways, that was a lot of good, um, good sentiment, uh, Louis, and um, I agree with that. I think it's going to be something that we'll need to work with the core developers as we overhaul a lot of the EIP wording and processes that we'll need to get them involved um, for their part of the core EIPs because that only touches like less than 200 people a year. The core EIPs track um, and maybe not even that many because there's not that many core developers and there's not like the average person writing a core EIP. It's like the same 30 people uh, with the exception of people like like Starkware who wanted to get involved and then they had to go down that bumpy path to um, start doing an EIP other other than you know some people who want to do the low level stuff it's it's very rare that we get the average person going through that process just a quick thought on the scale there in those different threads mm -hmm. <clears throat> the list of editors that there are at the moment is effectively the same list that there's been since 2016 Oh, like, that's you know. inaccurate. That list, I think, is inaccurate. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but my thought was just that um, for those different threads, you could have different groups of editors. You know, the, the core developers don't necessarily have to be gating or involved for standards to do with higher level things, right? You know, if it's the case that many, many of the proposals are at higher level, you know, ERC standards -y, things built on top of the core protocol you know perhaps a completely different set of people could be you know could come on board as editors you know kind of with an understanding of right you know we're, we're, we're not going to focus on the core things i don't know about core things but you know but i know about i know about smart contract dev and you know and you know can can help those forward yeah i think that's that's an interesting idea i think we need to define the scope of what an EIP editor should be doing um, beyond what EIP1 says and like figuring out if we need to add or delete anything and then we should figure out if there needs to be sub subgroups of EIP editors or like variant groups of EIP editors. That's a good idea though. I mean something that was proposed as well on the ETC side and we haven't done it yet but maybe would do it is kind of having another role as well as editor which is kind of like assistant or you know administrator uh, uh, who are basically like volunteers who are, you know, they're not, they're not, they, they would have, they're having merge rights, but essentially they're doing, you know, keeping things up to date, fixing broken links, uh, you know, helping things forward. You know, I guess it, it's kind of a, a role a little bit like the cat herders, to be honest, is it, it, sort of acknowledging that there's a lot of stuff that doesn't need that core protocol developer kind of skill set. But it's it's help, helping things move along. That's not a bad idea either. I think that's all really good. Um, we have a few minutes left, um, and uh, I said this was going to be short. That's Sorry, actually everyone. Things. <laughs> yeah. Who? What was that comment? I thought. 
the the there are what was how was I going to say this? Uh, the getting a group of people that can do a lot of the things that the editors don't need to do, like defining what editors do or don't do, and then also having a group of people that can do stuff that they don't need to do is seem is something that has seemed very valuable for me and just getting that would allow more people to be active in the process and um just to kind of i i've have i've have had a lot of um a lot of thoughts about this for a long time I, I, about a year ago when i first started getting or a year or more whoever who knows started getting into the eip at some point i like rewrote the entire thing like a proposal to rewrite the entire thing of how everything works and some big grand vision. And then since I've realized uh, I, I would strongly su uh, support or suggest that we look at small incremental changes that then are made over time uh, rather than kind of zooming out and having this big overhaul um, and like assuming that things will work like we think they will and instead make a small change, see how that works, and then continue to iterate on those things. I think that's really good, and sorry we crushed your hopes and dreams of a giant overhaul last year. <laughs> I don't know who oh, crushed no, your it hopes was, and dreams, but... No, it was good. I, I didn't actually even propose it. I just wrote it oh, all out. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it was just my way of thinking about it was like, oh, yeah, let's do all this stuff, and then I realized, wait, this is actually like a moving system. And we can just incrementally make it better. You think globally, you act locally. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good line. I'm going to steal that. Um, okay. Well, it's we have just a few more minutes, and so I don't want to get on any more tangents. Just do a couple of end announcements, and then wrap up the call. Uh, the first end announcement, um, after discussion with the um, Ethereum cat herders, this EIPIP initiative is going to fall under the Ethereum cat herders and that uh, the note taking will be funded. The videos uh, will be hosted on the Ethereum cat herders YouTube page and they will help with other pieces of support as needed, um, such as advertising it on Twitter and Reddit and stuff like that. Um, so that's one thing. So if, if people ask, like, who's doing this, you can say it's the Ethereum cat herders. Um, and then I am taking a lead role in facilitating it, um, technically. But there's, I mean, most other people on this call could take over what I'm doing if I'm not able to make a meeting. So it's really a group effort. Um, let's see. Was there any other final, like, um, things anyone wants to say uh as far as like announcements or ideas or things like that uh, for the next call um will we approve these minutes um does this become an official like is the outcome of this phone call we just had that now we have a scope the outcome of this phone call is that we have um Items that, uh, or the the biggest outcome, I believe, is that we have a list that the note taking that Pooja has been doing and the document that she created has a list of problems that we found with the EIP process. Between now and the next meeting, what I want to do is try to order those. Maybe it might require a spoken meeting, but I hopefully um, it won't require that, and we can just do it over Telegram and a Google Doc and just like vote up and down on which issues are the like the issues that people think are the worst issues that we need to address first does that make sense or do you think there's a better way to do it i think that's great unless it doesn't work and then it's not great um and then related uh you as the technical leader here do we have authority the people on this call to do the things that we want to do um, myself and Axic are EIP editors. I know other EIP editors want to get involved. And if we basically take our ideas from this meeting and put them in an EIP, um, it's kind of cheating because I'm an EIP editor, but I can absolutely, at a fair and, you know, honest way, push this along given enough community support. That's, that's one of the fears of me ever wanting to be an editor is that I'm on the other side and I don't want to have super, you know, I don't want to have super user power. You yeah, gotta, you know, compartmentalize that. I get that. You just but, do the best. You just so do the I want to know: is, is our goal here to come up with a proposal? Then we need, you know, what is the threshold here? Do we need unanimous consent from all EIP editors to change EIP one, or is that I, part of this discussion too? Like, you know, I don't know. I want to know how many. I want to know what is the step from these ideas to PR merged. 
Um, it would be ideas, ordering the ideas, coming up with solutions uh, in different documents that we can apply slowly, and then finding out the best way. Should this be a big, a big PR that has like six different changes, or should we do it little by little? Once we decide that, then we produce those PRs, um, and um, after, and I think it should, I'm leaning it for it being a big one that then we just kind of scrape, we kind of discuss within a GitHub issue and just say this has the backing of a lot of people, but we do want to discuss this over the next month or however long and then get a lot more opinions, um, edit it a little bit more, and then eventually once there is consensus and a last call issued, then it goes in. That's that's my idea, my dream ideal for it, although it might not work that way. Got it. Cool. And then the next meeting, um, would two weeks from now work? Sounds good. Yeah, I can do two weeks from good. now as well. Yeah. Okay. We'll do two weeks from now, January 29th at 1500 UTC. Um, and let's see. Okay. And then Bob has a final comment on the group chat, it looks like. Yeah, so I might as well just say it for the record, which sure. was that in the in the doc, there's the proposal to have a separate ECIP editors call, uh, rather than that being sort of bundled in with the core devs. And I think that is a great idea, because I think part of that, um, you know, political process, how do we push things through kind of thing, stems from that, because of course, decisions on changes in the core uh, protocol, uh, you know, they are deeply political and economically impactful. You know that whether things go in or not has real impact in the you know to the network participants um and you know i know a number of the core developers you know they're like i don't want to be you know i don't i don't want to be public facing i don't want to be political you know this this is just a technical specification process and and i mean that is true of the work of the core devs but it is not true of uh of you know whether ecips go through or not so I think dividing those two would be very useful also because the, the, the sets of work are different. You know, the core developers are developing clients. The ECIP editors are doing a, a technical specification process and then having these political decisions on what goes through or not. And the two are kind of deeply intertwined and it's many of the same people doing those two roles, but they are different. So I think it's a good idea to divide them up. I tend to disagree with this, this one because there is no one except the client developer that actually really know the, 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 the protocol at core. And separating one from the other is the recipe for uh, technical disaster, in my opinion. All, all I mean is that technical discussions on, on an EIP are, are things which the core devs would be involved with, but the actual process of, of deciding what goes through or not is the ECIP process. And yes, many of those same individuals you know are filling both roles um and you obviously aren't going to do something if the core devs would would not support it but but ultimately these are two different things you know the ecip process oh, I, and the core dev process are different that's all i'm saying i i, I agree there are two different things but at the same time my uh, we're uh, separating into two sort of uh will delay like put that responsibility that the core dev today is taking and put it on someone else. And it would be very easy for the client to say, it's not my problem anymore. And, and we end up with a situation where uh, some decisions are made and they, and they end up being a giant headache. And, and, uh, and so, so that's what I'm saying. It's separating the two, what technically, theoretically seems like a reasonable thing, could lead to, uh, to things where we end up having decisions that don't make sense in the context of the network. But I, on the separation, I think we somewhat agree. Yeah, and I, I would I would agree also with Lou, uh, Louis, um, I and I, um, we get a lot from having the the all core devs call existing. Like we if uh, having decisions being made on the all core devs call and then being reflected through the EIP editors or through EIP administrators process, um, I think gives us a really good separation and allows a lot of things to work well, well yeah, think I mean, process think wise. like this though um you know the cat herders didn't used to exist and they do now and there's obviously value there the magicians didn't used to exist and they do and there's obviously value there um you know and i see ecip call in the same kind of context 
is is like that it's like a it would be like a wrapper around the core devs of saying how can we help the core devs move the thing forward and and you know some decisions uh, you know are obviously like you know that going to drop back to that core devs group really to sort of make the call but but like you don't want to gum them up with all of the details i think it's useful I, to have that parallelism I, and you have to sync sometimes i, I agree Sorry, but like the, 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 the place where i would i would object in this part is that you don't see uh, the gef uh, developers coming to twitter and debate you don't see nevermind coming to twitter and debate you don't see those guys and if you separate like what is today their political role although they don't they don't think that it is a political role in my opinion uh then you just sort of take this responsibility off their shoulder and they will be very happy to have this responsibility off their shoulder but in terms of the security of the network and the network in general it would be in my opinion a disaster okay if so I could just yeah, we're, in for a, yeah yeah we're after, okay. we're after we're time. Time. <laughs> yes so let's 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 definitely pick it up next time and we can bring this up again feel free to write down and send me the gist of what was being discussed and i can definitely bring it up again next time so thanks everyone for coming and we will talk to you on Telegram. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Hudson, for her hosting.